sing it out this morning. Lord, you reign forevermore. Lord, you are the King of glory, King of glory. Come on, let me hear you echo.
difficult for him? Is there anything too difficult for him? Is there anything too hard for the Lord? Is there anything too hard for the Lord? Is there anything too difficult for him? Is there anything too difficult for him? For the Lord, is there anything too hard for the Lord? Is there anything too difficult for Him? Is there anything too difficult for Him? Is there anything too hard for the Lord? Is there anything too hard for the Lord? Is there anything too difficult for Him?
tells us in the book of Leviticus that, that the, the priests would come to the altar and they would sprinkle the blood of the lamb seven times onto the altar. Seven times they would stand there. It would perhaps look religious, but they were ordered by God to do that. And then we know in the New Testament, Jesus, when he died, shed his blood seven times. There were seven places Jesus shed his blood seven times for a very specific place in our life. We know that the blood came from his sweet brow and was the blood of faithfulness. And we can come to the cross and we can exchange all our disloyalty, all our unfaithfulness for the faithfulness of Jesus. We know that when they pulled the beard from his face, when they spat at him, they humiliated him, the blood that was shed there was the blood of identity that when we have felt insecure, when we have felt not good enough, we can come to the cross. We can exchange our insecurity, our lack of identity for his identity. We know that they whipped Jesus on the back. They 39 lashes that the Bible says by his stripes we would be healed. That blood of redemption is that we can come to the cross. We can ask for forgiveness for our sins and healing for our diseases. And I don't know if you if you've noticed every time someone came to Jesus and they needed healing in their bodies, what did he say? your sins are forgiven. And then, of course, when the religious leaders freaked out about it, Jesus said, 
um, to them, to the person that was sick, stand up and be healed open eyes, whatever the problem was. That is the blood of redemption. If you're coming before the Lord with condemnation, you can come to that cross today and exchange it for redemption, for the forgiveness of your sins. But if you are sick in your body, you can also come before the cross and exchange your sickness for healing. Jesus gave us healing at the cross. Amen. Then we know that they put crown of thorns in Jesus' head, that blood shed for victory, for conquest, that curses, the curses that the devil has bound over your family. It could be from generations back. We can cancel those curses and we can receive the blood of conquest. We can come before the cross. Listen to me. We don't have to go to some person, some prophet. God has given us personal access to the cross through the blood of conquest that we can cancel those, those curses. We can draw a land in the side. Uh, 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 let me say that again. Uh, uh, we can draw a line in the sand. Can you see I've got my words all mixed up? We can draw a line in the sand and say to the devil, no more by the blood of Jesus. We know that they put the nails through Jesus' hand, the blood of productivity, that we can have productive hands. Maybe you haven't been successful in your life. Maybe your hands have been idle. Maybe your hands have been cruel. Maybe your hands have led you to sin stealing, doing other stuff. You know, you know the Holy Spirit is ministering to you. But by the blood of productivity, we can make an exchange at the cross that we can have good hands. We can have generous hands. We can have productive hands. And then we know that they put nails through Jesus' feet. And those nails, um, that blood that was shed there was the blood of um, purpose. And maybe you're going, I don't know about my life. I feel like I'm purposeless. I don't have any purpose to my life. I want to tell you, we can come to the cross and we can exchange that lack of purpose, that inability to produce, that lack of purpose where we feel like we don't have a ministry. When we speak to people about Jesus, it falls on deaf ears. No, that is a lie from the devil. And we can come to the cross and we can actually have, instead of having a life where we feel so meaningless, where we feel like maybe death would be an option. It is a lie from the devil. God has given us purpose through the blood of purpose when Jesus had those nails put through his feet. And then we know the last place, the seventh place that, Je that Jesus shed his blood was when he was now dead and they put the spear through his right side and blood and water flowed. His heart was broken. Every loss of last drop of blood shed that our hearts may be made whole. And I want to tell you, there is not a single person in this place this morning who hasn't had a broken heart, who hasn't exper experienced rejection, who hasn't experienced betrayal. I want to tell you that blood shed that we can come to the cross and exchange our broken heart for a whole heart. God wants us to operate from a place of wholeness. He loves you. He chose you. The Bible says before you were formed, before you were born, God had adopted you into his family. He loved you. He sent his Jesus to sprinkle his blood seven times so we may be made whole. And what we have to do, I want you to think of areas in your life or situations or maybe something I've mentioned and you've gone, that is so me. It is so my situation. I'm so broken. It's, it's more than coming to the cross. I want you to imagine if this is the cross, that we, we don't just come to the cross and lay down that burden, lay down that, that situation, lay down that brokenness and walk away empty-handed. Because you know what the Bible says? The devils may go, but they come back. And they go, I can't whistle like that. Maybe someone could do it for me. One, two, three. Yes, the devil's going, hey, dudes, come. The place is empty. And the Bible says, with seven more devils. So we don't want to lay down and go in our own strength trying to figure out life. That's not what God wanted anyway. He said, all you that are heavy burdened, come and I will give you rest. But it means to come to the cross, to lay down and make an exchange and say, I will no longer be 
whatever situation you're battling with. I will no longer be idle. I will no longer be, maybe it's rudeness. Maybe you're standing here and you're going, I have such a bad relationship with my parents. We fight and I know I get rude and I speak rudely to them and I barge out and I don't want to do that, but I can't help it. Well, it's not just to come to the cross and to lay it down and say, Lord, I don't want to do that anymore. Walk away empty handed, but to say, Lord, I don't want to do that anymore. And today, by the power of the Holy Spirit, by the power of the blood of Jesus, I walk away choosing to be a peacemaker. The exchange is, I'm not going to walk away empty-handed, but the power of the blood of Jesus gives me an exchange that I can do exactly the opposite. And today... I determine that I will not speak disrespectfully. I will not walk out and slam the door, but I will speak. I will honor. I will apologize. I will honor them just by my attitude. You see, there's an exchange. And I just used an example, but you know your situation. You know your battle. We all have a battle. We all have, while we're living on this earth in this flesh, we have a battle. Don't look around and think anyone's got it together. But by the blood of Jesus, by the power of Jesus, we can walk in victory. But we've got to make the exchange. And so this morning, as we pray, I simply want you to stand there. And whatever it is you're battling with, I used a, an example. For some of you, it may be a silly example. For others of you, that may have been a very real example. And whether you are 12, whether you're 40, we call to honor our parents. If you're blessed to have parents in your life, honor them. And maybe your parents are dead. And you're going, I wish I had. Well, you, you have an opportunity now to say to God, Lord, I'm so sorry. I will not walk in condemnation anymore. I come to the cross. I make an exchange. I exchange the regret, the hurt, my regret of the past for your wholeness, for your victory. I don't have to repeat the mistakes of my past anymore. Amen. Isn't that what the blood of Jesus is about? We no longer have to walk in the chains of the devil anymore. I don't know about you. I want to be free from the shackles. I want to be free from the chains. I want to be free from the condemnation. I want to be free from the fact that the devil says you will never. You can't. It is a lie. The Bible says you have overwhelming victory because of the blood of Jesus. Amen. And so we are going to pray this morning and just a simple prayer. Don't stand there because if you just stand there like this, what are you doing? Nothing. I'm not asking you to come to the cross and do nothing. I'm asking you to come to the cross and in your mind lay down that thing, but exchange it. Walk away with the thing you're going to replace it with by the power of the Holy Spirit, by the power of the blood of Jesus. Amen. Are you ready? I'm just going to give us 30 seconds to have a really heartfelt prayer with the Lord, asking Him for the exchange, repenting, a simple prayer. Lord, I'm sorry. I come, I lay it down, visualize it, but this is what I take up. This is what I'm going to walk in. Thank you, Jesus, that I can walk in this. You're going to do that? Let's do it now. Come on, let's pray. by the cross of Jesus, that we can come to you, the foot of the cross, Lord, laying down the burdens, laying down the mess-ups, laying down the brokenness, laying down the condemnation, laying down the curses. Oh God, we instead exchange that by the power of the blood of Jesus. We exchange it for your wholeness. We exchange it for your faithfulness. We exchange it for your healing power over us. We exchange it for the breaking of addiction, that we are whole, and we exchange change it, Lord, that we will do good things. We will create good habits. Father, your Holy Spirit is revealing to us now what to do. And I pray, Father, that you would give us the strength to continue, that we will make that exchange and we will walk in it. And when the devil comes to condemn us, we will stand in the power of the blood of Jesus. Overwhelming victory is ours through the blood of Jesus. And so we give you thanks. We give you praise. We give you glory. We give you honor. What a mighty God you are. We say thank you. You are holy. You are glorious. We worship you. We praise you. Thank you, Jesus. We honor you and we give you 
give thanks and praise that we can be released like this by the power of the blood of Jesus. In Jesus' name. And everyone together said, Amen. Amen. Won't you be seated? Won't you greet someone around you? I just want to say to you, if this is your first time you are with us, we want to welcome you, yeah? You are so welcome, yeah, and I know that the Lord is going to minister to you. He's going to bless you. He's going to bless us as we are together this morning. Amen. Amen. Just to let you know some announcements, we have prayer happening this weekend. For the ladies, we have a Tuesday and a Thursday 5 a.m. prayer um, online. It is Zoom, a Zoom meeting. The men have a Wednesday 5 a.m. prayer, but also we are doing a global prayer um, from it's 8 a.m. to 9.30 a.m. The link is also on the my3c.tv um, website. And it is an incredibly powerful time as we are praying for the globe. Amen. I really want to encourage you to click onto the link and to get praying. It's amazing. I really want to encourage that. I also just want to mention anyone who's wanting to do an internship, maybe you're finishing up school and you don't know what to do next year and you'd like to dedicate that first fruit of your life as you navigate your way. There is training. There is stuff you can learn here at the church. Um, as you intern, if you are interested, please speak to the, the leaders around after the service. They will be able to help you. And then just to let you know that the store on the inside auditorium is having a 50% discount on all their shirts. It is a giveaway. Um, so I really want to encourage you to go and support. And I'm going to ask us to put our hands together for Shane as he presents the offering. Thank you, Shane. Awesome. So the offer, offer to reading today is taken from 1 Chronicles chapter 21 and verse 24. So this is a conversation now with uh, King David. And uh, the nation falls into a plague. People are dying. David wants to offer a sacrifice to the Lord. And he finds a guy called Aruna, and he's got a threshing floor. So he wants to build an altar and buy the land from him. And Aruna doesn't want to give him the land. He doesn't want to charge him. He says, no, why should I charge you as the king? Take the land. Take the oxen. I'll give you everything you need. And this is David's response in verse 24. He says, but King David replied to Aruna, no, I insist on paying the full price. I will not take from the Lord what is yours or sacrifice a burnt offering that costs me nothing. Now, I want you to think about this principle. Here you have a man, and the Bible says that David was a man after God's own heart. He had the heart of God, right? So he wasn't prepared to give without it costing him something. How many of you are Springbok fans? You should all be Springbok fans, aren't you? <laughs> You know, how I many of you watched that, that World Cup final? You know, I saw people that didn't know anything about rugby watch rugby, eh? And they were screaming even when it was going in the opposite direction, you know what I'm saying, eh? And the idea was, we all as South Africans felt the victory, am I right, eh? We wore our shirts, we watched the game, but none of us were on the field. And, you know, the, the, the thing is, this is what giving is like. We all feel the victory because the church progresses. The church touches lives, you understand. But David understood that the true victory comes when you're in the battlefield, you understand. When you're on the field and you're playing the match. You see, the, for us, the victory was great, but for the Springboks, they felt their bodies being tackled. They felt their blood, sweat, and tears. Some of them went off with injuries, you understand. They put their bodies on the line because they understood the victory for them is a whole lot more sweeter. Amen. And I want you to think about God, right? God practices this principle. God came in the battle of our sin, and what did He do? He sent His Son on the battlefield. He came in human clothing. He lived life like us. And then in the battlefield, He fought the battle. God wasn't a spectator. God engaged the battle. And as Jesus came and He fought the battle, He gave up His life, and it cost Him His life. See, it's free for us, but it's actually not free, because God paid the price. It cost him his life so that we can all be free. Isn't that awesome? Why would you want to not give to the Lord and let it cost you? Amen. Let's give with a willing heart tonight, I mean today, and then let's pray together. Father God, we just come before you. We thank you, Lord, for every heart that is here. We thank you, Lord, for the opportunity, Lord, to give. Not just to take, Father God, but to be a partaker, to be on the field, Father God, to, to give, Father God, that which we have, knowing, understanding, Father God, that the victory belongs to you. That salvation belongs to you, Father. 
We thank you for this church. We thank you for our pastors. We thank you for the offering that we're able to give. May you use it and multiply it to grow your kingdom. In the wonderful name of your son, Jesus. Amen. Are you ready to give? Log on to the my3c.tv website for your cashless donations. Made safe, made simple, made smart. Choose your donation option. Enter your amount and press pay now. Choose from one of our easy and convenient payment methods and you're good to go. You can give via credit or check card, instant EFT or QR code apps. My3c.tv cashless donations. Made safe, made simple, made smart. Fix your eyes on the screen for the QR code. C Live is excited to announce the release of our three new singles from the We Bow Down album. I Am Free, Upper Room, and The Lord's Prayer. Now available on all digital platforms including Apple Music, Spotify, Deezer, YouTube, and so much more. We Bow Down album features artists such as Kayam Tetwa, Doko Zombambo, and Dr. Tumi. Pre-order the We Bow Down album today. Join us for our annual G12 Africa Conference at the Moraleta Church in Twane on the 23rd and 24th of February 2024. Visit www.my3c.tv and get registered today. Back here, right here in KZN Hammersdale with the House Jilega Project as the Matha City Foundation team has committed to once again building this house. And today is a great day. As you can see here behind me, we've got uh, this truck here that is going to be pouring the foundation, the concrete uh, into the ground here. And uh, we are right here. It's early morning. We're looking to have a productive day with where we are at. And hey, I must just maybe move out of the way here because <laughs> you don't want to get yourself uh, stuck in any of this. But hey, let's check out what's uh, continuing throughout the entire day. And we are well underway to uh, finishing and build, rebuilding this house here in Hammersdale. Today is a great day uh, for some more progress with regards to how the building project is going. We had poured previously um, the concrete for the foundation and I've got good news for you. It is set and now it's time for all the profiling and uh, making sure that all the measurements are set. We're going to be starting to see the structure uh, starting to lift up here at House Gileka. And thank you once again for your continued support. Go to masasini.org and click on the donate button uh, to contribute to this amazing project where we are once again bringing hope and uh, to this family here in KZN. And Gazito, how's the project going so far? No, the project is going very well. For the meantime, we are just right by the foundation. Uh, as you can see, we have water line at the bottom there which we have just put it up. The next time, we are now going up again there so that we do our foundation all around. Then from there, we start going up. And what does it mean for you to be a part of a project um, that is helping a family that is currently homeless? Hey, I'm very, very glad to be, in, to be a part of this project. Uh, no, I'm glad, very glad, so that I'm also even helping Everybody's also helping here. Yeah. All the workers who are here, they are working so nicely and they've got all that, that motivation which they've got to help. So everybody's helping, as I can see.
Amen. Can we give the Lord Jesus Christ the biggest shout of praise? Amen. <coughs> um, in a few moments, we're going to be linking in with Pastor Bert. Um, just to mention, there's been a lot of power problems that they had there, load shedding and all sorts of stuff. And so Eskim, you know, helped. I mean, um, but they are on track. But um, <clears throat> I just wanted to, to, to mention that in terms of um, looking at what's going to be spoken about today, I want you to listen very intently. And there's something I just wanted to speak about before, before we join in with them. And that is the fact that um, when you look at, at what is going on in your life, your finances give you an indication of how much control your life is under. Out of control finances are indicative of an out of control life. And so I want you to think about your finances and your finances is not a story about whether you're rich or whether you're poor. Your finances is what do you do with what you have? Do you live within your means? And Jesus said in John chapter 8 verse 36, Therefore, if the Son makes you free, you shall be free indeed. Amen. So I'm going to ask all of you to put your right hand in your heart right now. And I'm going to ask you just to repeat after me. And say, Lord Jesus, I ask that today you'd speak to my life. That you'd minister to my heart. I pray that your word would be revealed to me. In a way that I can understand it. So that I can speak it. So that I can do it. And so it can change my life. I pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Now, I want you just to think about those words of Jesus there. That if the truth sets you free, then you will be free indeed. Amen. I want you really to sit down and think about your own life. And what is the level of freedom that you have in your life? What is the level at which you're being victorious in your life? And something else that we've been going through a lot is the fact that, um, and in fact we went through it with the baptisms last week as well, the fact that when you give your life to Jesus, you repent. And you repent means that you change your mind about how you want to live. Tell your neighbor you need to change your mind about how you want to live. You see, before you know Jesus, anything goes. Whatever you feel like goes. You make your own rules. You keep your own boundaries. You, you do whatever you want to do. You don't worry about what anyone or anything else um, thinks. In fact, what happens is then you decide you don't want to be alone for the rest of your life. You decide you want to get married. And the problem is now you get married, but you haven't repented. And so you're still thinking like the world. You're still thinking like the way that you used to think. And now you got the person that you marry who also thinks like the world. And the problem with the world is that the world thinks in a selfish manner. And when you are sitting there in the marriage and you are selfish and the person that you are married to is selfish, then guess what happens? You start fighting. Ask your neighbor, do you fight with the people in your house? And what is the biggest fight about? The biggest fight is about money. Tell your neighbor, say, hey, money makes the world go round. Say, tell your neighbor, hey, money can make your house go round. Tell your neighbor, money can make your house go round so fast that you get dizzy and you fall over. Come on, tell your neighbor, come on, I, some of you are not telling. I said, tell your neighbor, tell your neighbor, money can make your house spin so fast that you get dizzy and fall over. Amen. And then you have no freedom. Tell your neighbor, then you're not free. Okay, so at the end of the day, many people say, I want to be free to be me. But sometimes I want to be free to be me means you swipe in with a credit card. You got a Standard Bank one for there. You got an APSA one for there. You got a Net Bank one for there. You even go to Capitec and FNB. And then you go to some loan sharks. And why are they called loan sharks? Because when you don't pay, 
they're like a great white and they come and bite you. You understand what I'm saying? So the thing is, when you're out of control, you get into debt. When you get into debt, then it's a reflection to you that there's some things that you need to get under control. And this is a very, very important message. And so when we do, when we do link in, I want you to listen very intently. There's some very practical advice that you're going to get today. Amen. Have you got your notebooks? Have you got your notebook? Hold it up. Amen. Because I'm telling you now, there's going to be a couple of step plan in terms of how you're going to fix your stuff up. And if you don't fix your stuff up, then John, you know what's going to happen. Everything's going to be a stuff up. Amen. I don't know if you all heard that. If you don't fix your stuff up, then everything's going to be a stuff up. And you don't want your finances to be a stuff up. And so um, the other thing is that when you're living off debt, they charge you interest. They charge you interest on what you owe. And the interest, there's this thing called compound interest, which means, so yeah, you got your loan, they add interest on. And the next time they charge you interest, they, they charge you interest for the loan plus the interest. So that adds even more interest and even more interest. And then after a while, you look at your money and you're just not interested because you're paying so much interest that you don't have anything to spend. Amen? Tell your neighbor, you need to be interested in your money. Amen? And so looking at, at that at the end of the day, I really want you to sit down and think about your finances as we're going into December. Make it a, de a December to remember for the right reasons. You're going to remember December. That's why it's December and it rhymes with remember. Amen. You're going to remember December. You're either going to remember December for all the sin and the nonsense you get up to. Amen. Hopefully uh, there's not going to be one or two girls that are going to come back from December you know, and in about August, September next year, there's going to be a bambino coming because of December and you don't have a husband. Do you understand what I'm saying? And some of you, maybe you're going to come back from December. Hopefully not. But, um, you know, you owe 200 rand to everyone and now you owe 10,000 rand. Do you understand what I'm saying? And now you're going to spend the whole of 2024 paying December off. Tell your neighbor, do not pay December off for the whole of 2024. Otherwise, some of you, you're not going to be able to vote because you're not going to have enough money to go and vote because you're still busy paying off December whenever the elections happen in May. I think it's in May that the elections are happening. So it's very, very important that you sit down and begin to think about the fact that right now you have the opportunity to start planning your finances for 2024. And if you don't start planning your finances, then the devil's going to plan your finances for you. Tell your neighbor, I don't want the devil to plan my finances for 2024. And that is a terrible shame when the devil plans your finances. God has given you the ability to plan your own finances. Amen. Amen. I just want to check, Ryan, how far are we there? Okay. All right. So then I know how long I need to speak for. Last clip in the news. That's what he said for those of you who didn't hear. So now, um, I, I want you to understand one last thing. The Apostle John wrote to some of the followers saying that it is the will of God that you will be blessed above all things and that your soul too will prosper. So he's not just talking about your soul, he's talking about your financial well-being as well. God is interested in your financial well-being. But how's, going, how's God going to help you with your finances? If you're not interested in your finances. If you just get the money and you take the wallet out and as the money comes, you understand? And then there's no more money left. So then, then you take a card. Now I'll have to take my Discovery Medical Aid card. Amen. But anyway, just to pretend it's a credit card and you go there, tap, tap, tap. And, and maybe you tap so much that you remind me of a boxer that used to box in the 1970s. In the 1980s, his name was Tap Tap Makatini. Amen. He still knocked a guy named Charlie Weir out. He knocked the guy lights out. Charlie Weir, that's it. He's going to be a world champion. He fought Tap Tap Makatini. Tap Tap Makatini. Tap tapped him. You understand? And boom, he actually spun around and went down. You understand? So the thing is, at the end of the day, is Tap Tap Makatini going to come knock you out with your finances? 
You know, when you tap, tap everywhere you go. Tell your neighbor the only tap you should use is the one in your, in your kitchen. <laughs> Amen. Tell your neighbor, stop tapping all over the place. For soon enough, you will be tapped out. Amen. Amen. Can we just give the Lord a big shout of praise? Yeah, amen. And can we just give a big shout of praise? We're going to join up with Pastor Bert. And it's very, very powerful what he's going to share with you right now. So tell your neighbor, neighbor, are you awake? So neighbor, are you ready? Amen. So let's enjoy. God bless. Thanks for that. Amen. Oh, he's so hot and tired. Let's give the Lord a proper hand of praise for that. Hallelujah. Amen. You can't clap because you've got your fan in your hand. Hallelujah. Welcome, everybody. Good to be with you here this morning. Excited to be with you. And we're thankful to the Lord. Hallelujah. And uh, we're glad to be back. Shanae and I were in Mexico. And uh, we were there where we shared the Word of God. We had over 7,000 people in attendance in a Colosseum. And uh, we shared for four days, but we're thankful uh, for what the Lord did there. But there's no place like home. Can I get a big amen there? Amen. So we're excited to be with you. Welcome, everybody that's online. Good to have you with us. Those on Chao TV, DSTV, Channel 265, welcome. Our Impact Radio listeners, good to have you with us. And then our different venues, some of our venues that are, are, are with us in this service. We've got Paula Kwani, we've got Alberton. We've got Nigel, we've got 3C Active, we've got Pretoria West, we've got Shawshan Guve and Ivory Coast. Come on, let's give them a great hand of welcome. Good to have you with us. Centurion, give yourselves a great hand. Good to be in the house of the Lord this morning. Amen. Hallelujah. Are you blessed? Amen. We are so excited as to what God is doing, and I'm, I'm very proud of how the Lord is moving and working through each and every one of you. Uh, we're having great prayer meetings. Hallelujah. And we've been having our global intercession with the G12 churches uh, uh, throughout uh, the world. And we do 8 o'clock to 9.30 uh, on, uh, uh, on Zoom. You can get that link on our, uh, our page. And we're doing one more week. So we are only going to do last week, but they've asked us, please, to do one more week. So this week from 8 to half past 9 every morning, you can join us on Zoom. And uh, we're going to be participating in the global network of prayer. But with that, we also have our local network of tree. Can I get a big amen there? And I'm so proud of our ladies. We've got uh, close to one and a half thousand ladies that connect on Tuesdays and Thursdays with Shanae. Hallelujah. And then I've got uh, close to a thousand men that join me on a Wednesday morning. On Wednesday, we had 940 men join us. Let's give the Lord a hand of praise for that. Amen. <clears throat> And that's from five to six. And a church that prays together stays together. A family that prays together stays together. Amen. We need prayer. The only uh, 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 transformation that takes place is through prayer. And I want to encourage you to continue staying in prayer. Hallelujah. I know you guys and ladies can't wait till the new year. Hallelujah. You're waiting for that 21-day fast. Hallelujah. Because I know you want to do 5 o'clock every morning. Hallelujah. Okay, well, let's do Christmas first, and we'll get to that. Amen. Are you happy? Well, in this heat wave that we find ourselves, my goodness gracious, we've had extreme uh, technical problems, and you weren't here the first service. In the first service, I preached in the dark. And the first 15 minutes, I preached without a mic. Hallelujah. So that was quite a, we had quite an extraordinary service, the first service. But praise God, our technical difficulties have worked out. Everything was blowing up with the heat and uh, everything was so hot. But uh, we praise God that we are alive. Hallelujah. Let everything that has breath and heat praise the Lord. Can I get a big amen there? Amen. Hallelujah. Right. Are you ready for the word this morning? Amen. I want to continue the word on freedom. Say so it be freedom. freedom. John 8, 36 says, Therefore, if the Son makes you free, you are free indeed. Shout it out. Say with me, I am free because Jesus has set me free. So since he set you free, Galatians 5, verse 1, he says, Now stand fast, therefore, in the liberty or in the freedom that Christ has made us free. 
In other words, stand fast. You have been set free, now stand fast in your freedom. In other words, don't find yourself where you are once again yoked in bondage. And that's what it says here. Do not be entangled again with the yoke of bondage. Hallelujah. Say with me, I am free. free. Now stay free. free. Tell your neighbor, "You you are free. Stay free. Stand. Okay, so, so that's why we need to understand that we need to now walk in this freedom. Yet, I find people that have been set free, but over a period of time, they get caught up in the entanglement of the yoke of bondage. And specifically, I spoke about the bondage of finances. Proverbs 22 verse 7 says, The rich rules over the poor, and the borrower is the slave to the lender. So the question is, who owns you? Is it APSA? Is it Standard Bank? Is it Capitec? Hallelujah. Is it the furniture store? Is it Edgar's? Is it your credit card? Who's your master? Hallelujah. Pump your neighbor, say, who's your master? Tell you, I must tell you, I must, I must introduce you to my master. No, no, no. God wants us to be free. And that's why I I spend some time on on, on speaking about uh, about debt and that it's God's will that he wants us to be free of debt. Can I get a big amen there? And that's why when we find ourselves, we we see that debt causes damage and stress and anxiety and, and issues within the marriage and things like that. And I gave you five principles on what you need to apply to walk in financial freedom. And the number one thing I said was keep good records. Let me keep good records. In other words, you must account. You must know where you're at. So four things you need to know. Know what I own. Know what I owe, know where, what I earn, know where it goes. Say, know, where, know what you own, know what you owe, know what you earn, know where it goes. Well, I get 50 bucks here, 200 bucks there, 300 bucks. No, no, you've got to add it up over a month so that you know exactly how much you get. You understand, so that you can, you'll be surprised at how much money you get, how much you earn, and then you can actually then come to point number two, you can actually plan your spending. You can budget, save me budget. budget. It's so important that we need to budget. So what is budgeting? Budget is, is where you make a mutual decision, especially if you're married. The Bible says that two shall become one. Okay, so both of you need to be involved in budgeting. Don't be a lazy spouse. Don't leave it for your husband and don't leave it for your wife. Now you can have one of them if they are are, are, are gifted at doing the accounting, they can do the planning and whatever, but then you come together and together by mutual decision, you plan the budget. Can I get a big amen there? so that there is accountability with one another. Amen? Amen. Some of us don't like that one. Plan spending. Tell your money where to go rather than wondering where it went. Oh, I don't know where it went. Why don't you know? You need to know where it went. Ask your neighbor, where did all your money go? It's gone. Where is it? Where is it? You say, I don't know. It's gone. It's gone. No, no, no. You must know. Can I get a big amen there? Number three, you need to save for the future. You need to save. Proverbs 13, 11 says, wealth from get rich quick schemes quickly disappears. Wealth from hard work grows over time. Amen? So you need to save. Number four, you need to return the tithe back to the Lord. Can I get a big amen there? Because the 10% sanctifies. We're in a corrupt uh, system. We're in a corrupt economical system. And therefore, what we do, the 10%, we give to the Lord, and that sanctifies everything you have by acknowledging, saying, Lord, everything that I have belongs to you. Everything I have is own. And then when you do that, God takes 
and interest in your stuff. Yes. Hallelujah. And that's why Shanae and I, we've given the church. When we started the church, we gave the church back to Jesus. We made him the CEO of the church and the CFO of the church. Hallelujah. You understand? We gave it back to the Lord. We're accountable in our home. We made the Lord the CEO. We made the Lord the CFO of our house. And that's why we do that. We, we're faithful to the Lord in our commitment in giving that which belongs. And then lastly, enjoy what you have rather than complaining about what you don't have. You say, Pastor, what do I have? Well, you have breath. Can you breathe this morning? Well, with the heat, we're struggling to breathe. Hallelujah. But you can breathe this morning. Can I get a big amen there? Right now, do something with what you have. You don't have nothing. Can I get a big amen there? You can walk, you can talk, you can breathe, you can do something. So God's order is like this. You earn it, tithe it, save it, repay it, enjoy it. Say with me, earn it, tithe it, save it, repay it, enjoy it. Amen. And then today, I want to continue. And I want to continue with talking on freedom because I believe that God wants you to be free in 2024. And not get worried when the Reserve Bank governor has to do a speech. Because we operate independent of that. Can I get a big amen there? That we're not moved by when they, an when they announce an interest rate increase. No. So today, understand this. Out of control finances are just a symptom of an out of control life. Ask your neighbor, are you out of control? <laughs> are you out of control? An out of control finances is a symptom of an out of control life. And that's why we need a life manager. That's why you need Jesus as the CFO of your finances. Are you hearing me here today? And that's why it comes back to the key, the key in this, in the problems that we find ourselves is a lack of faith. The root of the most fin financial problems is unbelief. The question is, where do you put your trust? Where do you put your security? Job chapter 31 and verse 24 in the New Living Translation says, have I put my trust in money or felt secure because of my gold? Verse 25 says, have I gloated about my wealth and all that I own? Verse 28 it says, if so, I should be punished by the judges, for it would mean I have denied the God of heaven. Do you believe? Do you trust God with your finances? Where is your security? If your security is in your education, the Bible says you must be punished. Because that means you have denied the God of heaven. Is your security in your bank balance? Is your security in your background? Where is your security in your culture? Where's your security? The Bible teaches us that our security is in God. Hallelujah. In other words, I have faith. And that's why we see in the Bible in Joshua chapter 25, uh, uh, Joshua uh, chapter 25, I think in verse 15 or 24 and 15, uh, uh, Joshua is, is speaking and he is saying, he's saying, as for you, you choose whom you're gonna serve. You choose. If you wanna serve your ancestors, he says that. If you wanna serve them, he says go serve. You choose whom you will serve. If you prefer to serve the God, serve the God of your ancestors, then go serve. Don't do don't do Jesus and ancestors. If you want to go serve the ancestors, go to the graves, go talk, and go serve. Don't come and want to put Jesus into that and bring church into that and bring the Holy Spirit into that. So you choose whom you're going to serve. 
If you want to serve the gods, if you want to serve your money, and you think that's your security, then go serve your job. Go serve your business. Go serve your little thing. He says, but as for me and my house, as for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. We will serve the Lord. Don't come, don't come, you wanna cover both sides. You understand, you wanna come both sides in case you got the other side covered, you understand? You got Omar. No, 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 no. You decide whom you serve. Yeah, and that's what Joshua says. He said, as for me, you go do your thing. Don't come here half, half, half. Go, go serve. Don't come to church and say Christian and say, no, 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 no. Don't, don't come and Christ Christian and whatever. No, no, no. Go do your thing. Go serve your God and stand fast and do your thing. He says, but as for me and my house, I believe the Bible. I believe the word. Shanae and I have decided with our family, you know what, that's it. We believe the Bible. We live the Bible, we walk the Bible, we talk the Bible. We don't just preach the Bible, we do the Bible. Are you hearing me yet today? So we've decided. But if you wanna go play your play and do your thing in the half, 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 no, don't half, half, half. Don't be lukewarm and yeah, I want to add Jesus to your little lifestyle. Go live your life, go do your pleasure. You understand, go drink your drink on the weekends, go party your party, go do your thing, go find your thing that gives you your little. He said, but as for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. See, and that's the aspect when it comes to finances. It's faith, it's do you believe? And with most pastors that I find, see, I actually believe the Bible. Shanae actually believes the Bible. And that's why when I meet pastors that really believe, they play the church, they do the religious thing, but they don't actually do what the Bible says. They preach it, but don't do it themselves. Are you hearing me yet today? But we've decided that we will serve the Lord. Are you hearing me yet today? And that's why the issue must be settled once and for all. I trust the Lord. And you know what? If you're a Christian, you will be taken care of. It says, I've never seen the righteous forsaken. I have never seen the righteous forsaken. David says, I was young. This is David. He says, hey, I was young, but now I'm old. And I have yet to see the righteous forsaken or his descendants begging for bread. If you're begging, something's wrong. If you're a Christian, then there's something wrong. Never seen the righteous forsaken. God will take care of you, God will look after you. But you've gotta to come to that place where you take the word and you believe the word. Are you hearing me here today? And therefore, that's gotta be the decision we make. So, I wanna start off by saying that when I find people in poverty, Many times it's got to do with a, a mindset. And I've met millionaires that are, have got a poverty mindset. So it, 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 it's got nothing to do with how much you have. It's got to do with the way you think. Are you hearing me? I've met millionaires that are poor in their mind. They're poor in their thinking. So it's not got to do with how much you have. It's got to do with a mindset. And Proverbs chapter 24, verse 30, he says, I walk by the field of a lazy person, the vineyard of one with no common sense. Bump your name and say, oh, oh, here it starts. Here it starts. Lazy people. I meet a lot of lazy people in South Africa these days. Lazy. They got a job, but they're lazy. They contracted to work eight hours a day, 
But they don't work eight hours a day. Maybe nine hours a day. They maybe work even over time, but they don't really work. They get paid over time because they didn't do the work when they were supposed to be working. They're playing solitaire. They're on the phone gossiping with their friends. Lazy, lazy, lazy. Contracted to work eight hours a day. But you get at work eight o'clock, takes you two hours to pack out everything, to get a cup of coffee, to get into the zone of working. Hello. Then you start, work finishes at 4.30, you start packing up at 2.30, you start packing up. Hello, somebody. Say it me lazy. lazy. Say it me lazy. lazy. People that work, there's no urgency in what they do. Something that should take you five minutes takes you five hours because there's no urgency. Lazy. Bump your neighbor and say, is that you? You like that? <laughs> See, it's a, it, it's a, the Bible says, I don't know how. Why, why don't you use your brain and think and work out how and fail and fail and fail and fail until you get it right? Oh, I give up. How much work did you put in? 10 minutes. Oh, I can't do this. No. If you've worked five hours or six hours and you can't do that, then we can talk. Then we find somebody that can help you. You see, you need to take responsibility. Take responsibility where you're at. Understand the mindset of working. Say with me, working. working. That's why I've met many people that are unemployed, but after I've met with them five minutes, I know they're gonna stay unemployed for the rest of their lives. They can't write. Why? They don't want to write. I can't write, I can't read, but they don't want to read. See, it's one thing if you can't, it's one thing if you don't put in the effort to want to. Can I get a big amen there? Amen. I've met people that are unemployed. I know they're not gonna get a job because you only employ people that work. The Bible says you don't work, you don't eat. You don't work, you don't eat. Eat. It doesn't say if you're not employed, you don't eat. So you can be employed, you can be unemployed, but still work. Now you're lying in bed, you're sleeping till 10 o'clock in the morning. Everybody has gone in the house and they're out and they're going all over and they're doing their work and you lying at home and you're sleeping till 10 o'clock in the morning and then you get up, you make food and then you leave the dishes for someone else to clean. You lie around and then you go speak to your friends and you're playing with your friends, guess what? you're not gonna get employment anywhere. Because you don't employ lazy people. Only stupid people employ lazy people. Amen? Amen. So you gotta work. 
You come back home and say, what did you do today? Oh, I emailed my CV to so many people. Emailing your CV is not work. Oh, I'm looking for a job. What did you do? Uh, I emailed my CV. Seriously, guess what? You're never gonna get a job. <coughs> Bump your neighbor, ask, do you have a job? <laughs> Call me a prophet. Who's your boss? God's your boss. If you're unemployed, God's okay that you're unemployed. You deserve to be unemployed. You see, because if you're a Christian, he'll never see the righteous forsaken or his descendants begging for bread. Now, if you have been, if you've lost your job and you are unemployed and you're in the meantime working, you're doing something, guess what? It's not gonna take, it's just a trial and tribulation you're going through and you know what? You will get a good job and you'll get a better job than what you did have. God will take care of you. So, so, so if, you're, if you're a worker and you've lost your job because of your, the business that died or things that happened, things like that happen, but you know you work. But you don't sit at home and do nothing. You go work for somebody and you do it for free. Go find an NGO, volunteer your time, volunteer your services, or go work for a guy and say, you know what, I'm gonna work for you. You don't have to pay me anything. And after a while, after a while, the guys realize your value. Guess what, now they start paying you. Why, they don't wanna lose you, you understand? Because of the contribution you make to their business. Are you hearing me yet today? You know, yesterday I was in Timbisa. And uh, I went to go preach at a church there last night. And as I was in Timbisa, I went past a government building. The government building was a nice building. I can see it's not too old. And it's got paving, it's got a fence around it. But as I'm driving past the, you see, I look at things like this. I always see things like this. As I'm driving past the government building, I see. because then I'm going to have a problem. You see, now this is how some people think. Every day, they will look at the weeds and they will see the weeds grow. And they will think, it's not my job. It's not my job. Here's the thing. If you give me a spade, I will get rid of those weeds in one lunch hour. I won't even steal the government's time. I won't even ask for the government's time. I can, in one lunch hour, I can take the spade and I can clean that whole place, maybe two, two lunch hours, because the weeds were a little bit high, so it will take a little bit of time. Are you hearing me? Yeah. And we can clean. Are you hearing me? We clean it up. But now we say, but oh, that's not my job. You see, who are you saying that to? You're saying it to God. And everybody else is seeing how you take responsibility how you take care of other people's stuff. Oh, I don't know, maybe your house looks like that. I don't know. Maybe your house has got weeds all inside and maybe, I don't know. Maybe that's how you live. 
Maybe your house is dirty. I don't know. I'm looking at the paint and I'm thinking, you know what? A, a, a paint, five liter paint is going to cost like 50 rand. It will take me one or two lunch hours just by me to paint it. 50 rand. You ask of all the workers, every guy give me one rand. 50 people that work here, give me one rand. We all buy paint. And you know what? Well, it's not my job. Oh, the government. The go ah, no, no, no. Of that whole building, from the leader of the person who runs that whole thing, there's not one person who thinks, let me paint the place. Let me take out the weeds. Guess what? Everybody, everyone there has got a poverty mentality, which means none of them will ever be financially blessed, ever. Impossible. Impossible. And if there's somebody working at that building that is rich, it's corruption. Because then you steal. Do you want me to tell you which building it is? Yeah. We fix our roads here, going up here, right up there. You fix the roads. We've got to now. We've got to go. We've got to go cut the grass ourselves. It's the it's the municipality's responsibility. We pay for them to to they 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 don't do it. The Pretoria municipality. We do it. I think I'm gonna put up a sign and say, it's not the government, we clean our own roads. <laughs> it's, not, it's not Swanee. I'm talking about Swanee government. And once again, Pastor Morris, where you? We need to clean these roads again, again this week. I see the grass has grown because we've got some rain, amen? amen? But who do you think? Who do you think paints all there by the railways and paints all those things there? Who do you think does that? 3C. Who do you think goes and digs that bridge there? That bridge we go through with all the mud and stuff there? Who do you think takes out all that mud and stuff? 3C. Now do we say, well, yes. Now do we, do we say, well, it's not our job. You know, it's, what, it's, it's the government's job. No, no, no. But I'm not gonna let our place look like a, are you hearing me? No, no, and that's why the Lord blesses us. That's why the Lord has blessed us with this property. Hallelujah. Because he knows we take care. And if we take care of other people's stuff, you know what? God is going to bless us because that's how you think. That's why this church will always be prosperous. Hallelujah. Because we clean the roads, not just for us. We clean the roads for all the community. And some of you, you're staying in some of your roads. And if you look, you look your house, you look outside your house. Look at the pavement. Look at your road. Why don't you sweep your road? Uh, it's not my job. Poverty mentality. Are you hearing me here today? There's a feedback on the sound. Can you? Right. Can you hear me? Can you just fix it, please? Right, so the other day I was driving the big BMW, brand new 750. <laughs> and I'm driving behind this car. You know what the guys do? There the window goes down and they throw out a packet KFC, full of bones and everything, they throw it in the middle of the road, there the window goes down and they just throw it out. Somebody that's driving a three million rand car, poverty mentality. Are you hearing me? There they throw. So who must pick that up? I stop and pick that up. 3C, yes. 3C, 3C will pick it up. Are you hearing me here today? So therefore we need to bring 
Get rid of that poverty mentality. Proverbs 14, 23 says, in all labor there is profit, but it's not just financial profit. God gives you influence. God sets you apart. If you take responsibility, God will make sure that he, 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 he positions you for responsibility. When you take care of other people's things, when you take responsibility for their development, when you take responsibility for their thinking, it brings profit. All labor, there is profit. He says, but idle chatter leads to poverty. Mere talk. Oh, we're going to do it. No, we're going to do it. You talk, 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 talk. You come, at, you come to work and all you're doing is talk, talk, talk. And you and your friends are chattering. You're gossiping and stuff. You're, not, you're getting paid, but you're chatting. You're getting paid, but you're taking three hours tea. Can I get a big amen there? You're getting paid, but you're on the phone. Who sees it? God sees it. Amen? And I haven't even started my message yet. Time's up. Ish. Hebrews 13, 5. Don't love money. Be satisfied with what you have. For God has said, I will never leave you. I will never forsake you. I'll never abandon you. Never do anything for money because then you're a slave. No, do what you need to do and money follows you. Come on, somebody. You pick up the papers, you do the job, we clean the pavements. When you look again, money comes along. You understand? God provides for you. Clean the streets where you live. Clean the road where you live. Clean the pavements where you live. Take responsibility. When you look again, God positions you. And guess what? The authority comes and the money comes taking responsibility in Jesus name amen Amen. sure ish time so basically what I'm saying today what I haven't said make sure you don't waste money during this time during this holidays don't make debt don't go on holiday on your credit card can I get a big amen there Don't buy stuff on credit. It's called unsecured debt, which means the interest rates are higher, which means you're paying interest on interest, which is a very dangerous place to be. You're making somebody else wealthy. You're making somebody else rich, and you're putting stress on your own self. And now you work hard for the year, and you think, well, I deserve it. Yes, the reason you had to work hard is because of your debt. No, get out of the debt that you're not enslaved. Because I want to prophesy 2024 is going to be a year of freedom in your life. God's going to set you free. He's going to set you financially free. In the name of Jesus, can I get a big amen there? He's going to set you free. But then don't make stupid decisions. Well, I must have it. I must have it now. I must have those pair of jeans. No. They got holes in. Yes. It's nice. Make the holes bigger. Uh Uh-uh, no, I must have the couch. No, you must nothing. Bump your neighbor and say, you must nothing. (laughs) You must nothing. No, no, no. No, 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 you you, you put some cushions and you put the chair and people come and say, oh, it's the new fashion. We don't do couches, no. We, we do it like the, 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 the East. We, we, put, we put, you know, then when you go to their house, they, they say, where's your couch? No, I threw out the couch because the new fashion now, you see, we put, the, we put the cushions. No, no, no. Don't buy things you can't afford. Well, I deserve the holiday. No, no, no. Get a tent. Go put it up in your backyard. If you don't have a backyard, go to your parents, put it in their backyard. Or you put your friends in the backyard. And after two days of sleeping in the backyard, you go back home and you say, oh, there's no place like home. <laughs> and guess what? You don't owe money. Now you travel for days to get somewhere and you stay somewhere and it's hot and you're doing and you're paying at the kids and then you come back and say, oh, it was a good holiday. Oh, but there's no place like home. But now you owe 10,000, you owe 30,000, you owe 100,000. Can I get a big amen there? No, no, don't waste your money, pay off your debt. Is this helping you? 
Amen. Be responsible with your monies. And I, I don't have time to go through all this word. Maybe I must do it next week. We'll see. Amen. Let's all stand to our feet. Just stay where you are. Lift up your hands. Lord, you see our hands as we surrender ourselves unto you. You know our stresses. You know our financial stress. You know our difficulty. But Lord, we make a decision to follow your word and your principles. I pray for a miraculous turnaround in each and every person's finances in the name of Jesus. Lord, that this year we'll replace debt with dedication. We'll replace pressure with peace. And Lord, that you'll help us to get out of the hole and onto a pathway to financial freedom in Jesus' name. Say with me, Heavenly Father, we make a decision to follow your financial plan for 2024. Forgive me for spending more than I make. Forgive me for unwise purchases. I commit to your financial principles. Help me, Lord, to be better at keeping records, to be better at budgeting, to be better at saving, to put you first in my finances, giving my tithe back to you, that I will enjoy what I have and not complain about what I don't have. Jesus, I invite you to be the manager of my life, to be the CFO of my finances and my future. Thank you, Lord, that you're in control and that you help me to be done with debt. In Jesus' name, give the Lord a mighty hand of praise. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus.